Hey, what's up, guys? Sony here. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to change the SSID and password on your Optimum LC1 box. Now, we're going to do it on the website, the Optimum.net website, and we can also do it on the uh, LC1 box itself. I'll show you how to do that on LC1 box after this. Now, first thing you want to do is you pretty much want to log into your Optimum ID. If you don't have an Optimum ID, you have to create one. If you're having a hard time trying to create it, uh, whenever you load into the Optimum homepage, sometimes it doesn't let you go through. So what you want to do, you want to open my profile, and then you want to create it as you see, mine just pops up. And then you go ahead and create an Optimum ID right here. And then hopefully it'll go through. If not, then you might have to figure out something that sometimes it will not go through. Make sure you have your account number, your last name, and the uh, phone number that's associated with it. Uh, either your mobile number or your home number. Most people most likely be using their mobile number. Uh, so let's just go back to the home page. Because, let's just load that. I'm going to go ahead and launch in with mine. As you can see, mine is uh, it's saved on my cloud, so I can just do the face ID. This is all my stuff. And you can have it set to uh, remember you. I never do that, honestly. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in. And like, so it's all these stupid uh, things here. It's always annoying having these pop ups. All right, so once you logged in, you're out of my ID. You want to hit the little like menu icon up here and you want to click to Ethernet, Internet. Get to there. Here the uh, support stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to scroll down to router and you want to hit settings. All right. Something low. Internet is a little slow today because it's kind of raining outside. So forgive me, that is a little slow. So once you're on my network dashboard, just let it load if it doesn't do anything. Now, right now, what it's doing is gonna ask me about the smart Wi-Fi thing. It's, uh, it should show up, there we go. Um, the smart Wi-Fi thing. All right, let's just read it. Turn on smart Wi-Fi. This is the smart Wi-Fi. Enjoying the seamless wireless experience now with a single network name, Imagination. That's my network name. Um, your devices get the best possible connection through an advanced mesh technology. Personalize and view your home network status through the Optimum Support app. Now, let me tell you something. I already tried this, and it doesn't always work that well. So basically what it does, it combines the 2.0 four and five gigahertz into one thing. And then it pretty much lets your personal device, either your iPhone, Android phone, uh, game console, decide which one it wants to use. Um, but if you have an older device that's only 2.4 gigahertz compliant, this might not work that well. Let me tell you why. Now, like I said, it meshes the network together. The, the reason why they do this, the reason why they're doing this, is because of the mini boxes. The mini boxes are extending the Wi Fi network, and that's how they connect with the WPS line. Uh, if you guys are not sure about that, I'll put a link in the description to the video I did uh, uh, getting the features working on the mini boxes. You guys can check that out. You go check that out. Um, so, basically, what this is, is supposed to like help the mini boxes work properly. Let me show you something. Your devices will not work properly. If you've got an older laptop that's only 2.4 gigahertz compliant, or say like if you're using the PlayStation 3 or the original model PlayStation 4 that's only um, 2.4 gigahertz compliant and not 5 gigahertz supported, you're gonna run into some issues, most likely speed issues. Now, 2.4 GHz is already pretty slow with speed. Uh, I'm pretty much test this. I'll test this after. Um, I'll pretty much do it in a video of that if you guys want me to. 2.4 GHz and only max out, I think, only at 100 megabits per second. It, it depends on uh, how your device is going to support it. Um, 
for me, it matches out at least like the 50, 50 minutes per second, which is not really that great if you want to do gaming. And then sometimes with your devices, sometimes when the IP address is always changing, your IP address seems to always change on your personal device sometimes. I had this happen in uh, multiple occasions that the IP address will always constantly change and that you're not going to get the best speed that you want. And what I recommend it? No, I don't recommend turning on the smart Wi-Fi, especially if you have a guest Wi-Fi network, which I'm going to show you guys how to set up too. Especially if you have a guest Wi-Fi network and you really want to separate the guest Wi-Fi and between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, that's also going to impact uh, your performance on your Wi-Fi. Now, some people might say, oh, it's pretty much a best benefit because it's only one network and then your device can work with it. Wrong. Your device is always constantly changing its IP address. For example, the iPhone, one thing I noticed when it's constantly changing its IP address, it does disconnect you from the 5 gigahertz band. Um, and I have it to, I have it set to automatically switch to 2.4 gigahertz if you set it that way. Um, so I do not recommend this at all. Um, they always will have it set as default when you don't change your SSID and password. Um, so once you change it, then it will uh, revert back to separate 2.1 by gigahertz. So don't use smart Wi-Fi. So pretty much just trying to make the mini boxes work properly. Because the mini boxes, they always change from 5 to 2.4 gigahertz constantly. And that's why the calls and that's why the boxes always just and it's a lot. That's why the boxes always stop working. It is constantly, constantly changing to 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi Fi band. You don't want your personal device to do that, especially if it's something that is going to rely on fast internet speed. You don't want to do that. You just want to have a simple connection to 5 gigahertz or 2.4, depending on what your device supports. If your device supports only 2.4, then 2.4 will be the best option for your device that only supports it and just not going to get that reliable speed. And now if it has the Ethernet port, you can go ahead and connect directly to the Ethernet port from the back of the box if you have that option. If you have a device that has 5 gigahertz, use the 5 gigahertz. You're going to get a better speed. Your range will be a little bit lower because 5 gigahertz is not really uh, that common for most devices to even have. Uh, a larger range. If you're somewhat like far, as soon as you have like a two-story house or something like that, um, and your router is kind of far, like say your router is like in the front part of the house, and then you're in the backyard, the back side, if you notice that your five gigahertz wireless connection is a little low, and switch to the two point four gigahertz manually. Um, that's what I prefer, and that's what I like to use. And same thing goes, like I said, for the guest Wi-Fi network. It's going to depend on the devices. Um, so if you have a device that seems to be like causing problems with this, you want to turn it off. If it doesn't even ask you to do this, just hit no thanks later. So I don't recommend it personally. Um, I actually had bad experience of using a combined Wi-Fi network in the past. Even if you have a wireless extender, I know Verizon Files, and uh, same thing with x 3 s They have those little wireless extenders um, that you plug into the outlet. Well, with x 3 you put them into your wall outlet, and it uses, like, your electricity to expand the network. But it actually doesn't, and what it does is just, uh, re <laughs> it just resent the network strength to make it more, uh, make it seem like you have a better, strong network. And that's pretty much what I like about x 3 It actually... Put a lot into work with their wireless command. With Verizon files you can get an extender. I'm not sure if you can uh, get it when you get files installed. I haven't really had files ever since, so it's been a long time since I've been a Verizon files customer. And I know you guys are say, well, get Verizon files if you want to switch to Asimov. I'm stuck with Asimov apparently, uh, mostly because I wouldn't get Asimov where I live. And also, I'm trying to help you guys, and I feel like if I end up pushing the app, I'm probably going to not be able to help a lot of people. All right, so enough of that talk, and I know that was, like, super long. Sorry. Uh, I just wanted to tell you guys and get that out of there. So, all right, so my Wi-Fi network. 
I can see is imagination. Uh, that's what I'm just going to have it for now until, <clears throat> sorry, until um, I want to change it. I do want to change it, actually. I kind of don't like the imagination name. Um, I just went with it because I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, that's a cool name. But now I kind of want to change it to Wire Spark. Nobody say it, please. <laughs> All right. So pretty much what you want to do, you just want to uh, hit the more button. And then you just want to go ahead and go through your setting. Just want to type in whatever you like or your personal. Uh, don't use personal name. Um, and then make sure you don't use like any like, um, you know, emojis or anything like that. You just want to be normal. Um, if you tend to use like a flash or something like that, sometimes it'll kind of like corrupt it for some reason. Like it'll make it put like an, an at sign, a slash sign, or an information point sign. I tried that before when I used to do uh, people's name under their Wi-Fi because they always wanted it. I always tell them not to. Um, sometimes it'll end up messing up the router. Um, and you can see um, if you want to have the dual band Wi-Fi connection, uh, you want to separate them. Now, as you can see, the box that is not set, same network name and password as 2.4 gigahertz, mm -hmm. select that box, but make sure you put the 5G badge on it. So it'll underscore or dash 5G, and that way you separate them. And sometimes when you don't separate them, it will automatically merge them together, and then sometimes your devices have to rely on what one you'll connect to. Now, here, Mobile device, hey, like the iPhone, is actually pretty good at what it should choose. Now, next thing is you want to do your security. I recommend WPA and WPA2. Now, I really do not like what Awesome limits you. Now, it's really been what a uh, gigahertz band using. Now, I really don't like that Awesome is limited with these type of settings. Uh, pretty much when you got WPA3, I think it's probably already out for the Wi-Fi 6 routers. <clears throat> you definitely want more uh, capability of setting up your security. I had an incident in the past when I had a friend over. Uh, she bought a computer. Why well, should say she? So she bought her computer, and I was fixing it. And then uh, she ended up connecting it to uh, my main network instead of my guest network. And she uh, apparently got the password from a family member, and they gave her the main network password, which I tell everybody, if you're going to have friends over, let them use the guest network. The guest network is the one that's filtered out. Let's just say uh, the virus that was on her computer went into my server and it crashed my server. Luckily, I was able to fix it. So, but you definitely want to filter that out. Um, also, WPA and WPA2, um, it's not like it's her thing, but it's not as great as you think it is. WPA3 um, with Wi Fi 6 is pretty much the best option. WPA and WPA2 is usually practical nowadays. A lot of hackers, including me, I can usually practice this thing no problem myself. I don't even have to, I don't even have to try real hard to even do it. Uh, especially like uh, WEP, W E P, that's what they call it. <laughs> um, WPE or WEP um, was easily the easiest one to crack open um, back when Wi-Fi was like mainstream, when people wanted Wi-Fi in their houses. So you pretty much only get two options, is WPA or WPA2. Uh, just use both of them, and some devices uh, will not be w WQ, uh, excuse me, WPA2 compliant yet. Uh, most newer devices are, but if you have an older device that doesn't have WPA2 support, uh, you just want to combine those two. Um, you might want to like check and see like which devices will easily support it um, for your wireless network. And it's going to depend on your device, like I said. Um, especially if you have an older device that's only Wi-Fi N and only using 2.4 gigahertz, that is pretty much one of the reasons why you should switch to that. Um, as for the password, make the password the same on both of them. Uh, if you do want to push a mug in, you know, it's more power to you and choose a different password on each of the uh, Wi-Fi band if you want to.
Uh, but like I said, make sure you separate uh, your 2.4 and gigahertz, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. I would say like put the 2.4 gigahertz um, badge on here. I'll do it for you guys. 2.4. I'm going to type a little, little flow that way, you know. Make it easier for you guys to see. So you can uh, badge it up like that. Uh, so make sure that you want to know that it's separating. You can do a dash if you decide to. Yeah. Face that back. Or you can do an underscore. I actually prefer doing an underscore because the underscore actually shows it a bit differently. But if you just want to leave it normal like that, you can leave it normal like that. And then just add the uh, 5G badge on the 5G one. Um, the reason why I don't have the uh, same network name and password checked up at 2.4 gigahertz, um, sometimes it will just make it regularly. But also, that's also another option to make them merge and make them as like one simple network, which we don't want to do. Now, since I'm not going to be changing it, I'm going to close that option. Your land port, you're pretty much the one who want to mess with that. I had to mess with it, and I've been noticing that my game consoles um, are like slowing down. But that's mostly because I have an older Ethernet cable. You definitely be using Cat 6A or Cat 7 from nowadays. And 4K and 8K, it, it'll really take. They, you know, if you're watching like 4K content with HDR or Adobe Vision, depending on what content you're watching it on, or depending on what display you're watching it on, it's going to take a hell of a lot of speed, uh, especially if you're gaming. Uh, one thing I noticed between the PS4 is that the PS4 does take a lot of speed. And then the Xbox One, ugh, the Xbox One is the worst one, because the Xbox One can't your internet speed, like, almost half, like, I have 300 megabits per second, I get 350 megabits per second. And whenever I have my Xbox One on and whatever is doing updating, let's just say it takes it to its limit and then I would get like five megabits per second. Port forwarding, uh, apparently I have one. Port forwarding will rule. Uh, this will pretty much be like a thing that you'll use for your server. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's what it was, my server. My server's not connected right now, but um, yeah, this will be like a thing if you want to do uh, direct data transfer, if you do want to do like, like off of cloud stuff, if you want to make like your on online cloud thing yourself, uh, you can always do that if you want to. You have to know what your IP address is on your device and you're planning on doing the port forward and all that. Then all the other settings, what is going to ignore all the other settings right here for now? I'm going to go ahead and do the guest network. Um, now, do you want to update your screen to say right cloud? Uh, not now. Now, right now, I'm having a hard time getting into it. Um, there's something that's going on with my uh, iPhone thing. But I think you guys can see right here. You can almost just look at it. You really try to hold this. Yeah, it's not, let, it's not letting me go through it. Optimal, please fix this because I'm trying to do the DNS server thing and some of my devices are having a problem connecting to my server. Especially my computer is having a problem. But, <clears throat> excuse me. So you just hit the setup get network thing, it'll turn it on. And then you can pretty much just do 2.1 you to her if you just want one SSID password. Uh, I'm going to do your uh, security check. And see, we got one for 5G. As you can see, it's uh, right out. Of, yeah. And I actually already have the 5G one. If you want to make 5G, then you can just hit manually perform 5G network. So uh, that will just be easy for you. And you can see imagination underscore guest. Imagination underscore guest 5G. So, like I said, you want to separate them, you don't want to merge them. And then you hit save changes. But since this guy is not letting me, I don't know why. It, it's been like this ever since I um uh, ever since I set up the Y the guest network. I don't know why it's not letting me. It's something about my uh, main IP address that's not working properly. I think one of my devices had a corrupted file on them that that could be causing that issue. And um, I can see. 
You want to make sure you have like the 802.11 B, G, and N, and then the 802.8 and AC, which now is AX or Wi Fi 6. Um, if you want to use your own router, you definitely can. Uh, I wish there was a way they could bridge mode this like on the Xfinity routers and like on the file router. Or actually, I'm not sure you can do it on the file router. Uh, let me know if you guys can. I had a been with file for a while. Um, but if you really want to use another router, which I definitely recommend you do. Now, if you really want to use your own modem, it's new. I confirm, I recently found out confirmed that they are allowing some customers that have Aussie 1 including me, um, use your own modem. And that's probably what I'm going to do. And I do want to save money with the cable. I'm actually personally paying the cable bill. Yeah, that, that, that's legit. Uh, I'm personally paying for it. <laughs> I'm personally paying my own cable bill, my own money, my own stuff, my own responsibility. Matter of fact, it has to be paid today, actually. I have to check on it. Um, but if you, want, if you still want to use your own modem, but if you still want to have the all cheap one for some odd reason, uh, you can use your own modem. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a twist around. Now, if you guys want me to make a video on that, I will. I'll definitely make a video. I, I might have to buy a new router, actually. Or I don't want to just mess around with my running loss router. But uh, pretty much what you want to do, like pretty much activate like regular modem, and you want to return the main box if you have it. Um, yeah. If you have the gigabit router, the gigabit modem router from Alcom, uh, just make sure you go online and see if any of the modems that you want to buy is gigabit supported, hopefully 3.1 supported. Now, Alcom is still relying on 3.0, that's just 3.0, which is kind of strange. Most cable companies right now are actually operating in that's just 3.1, <laughs> sorry. I'm a little mixed up with my uh, so um, I know it speedily is already at Doctor 3.1, so you actually can get a gigabit compliant modem. Um, especially if you do want to do like network server stuff, you definitely want to have the extra speed and the extra power with a like with your personal modem and extra features and extra control if you don't really get any good control. Uh, with the exception of the Xfinity uh, Fly router. The Xfinity uh, Fly router is actually pretty good for most people to control the Wi Fi. But if you want like super control, like I would say like Linus Tech Tip style, then there you go. You got to use your own stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and show you guys how to change it on the Oxygen 1 mini box. Now, I have, you have to have the Oxygen 1 uh, main box. I said, I said mini box, sorry. You have to have the Oxygen 1 main box to change it. And then once you change it, you have to do the WPS thing. Uh, and again, what's on like in the description to show you guys how to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. So let me just go ahead and log out. And on my, uh, also on my day. So it's all this like extra junk. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, I got your out uh, one menu name box here. Now basically what you want to do Hit the home button. Those are all settings. Go to the internet. And then my home network, do not turn on. Do not turn on your smart Wi Fi. You don't want that. Go to my home network. And there you go. That's how you change it. If you try to change it, it'll give you a warning uh, what you have to, what it's going to do once you change it. You hit continue and then you can go ahead and change it. Now I'm not going to change it. So uh, cancel. That's pretty much all you have to do on the LT1 main bot. If you're having a hard time trying to figure out some of my ID. So, uh, there you go. That's how you do it. So once we even change it, and once we do change it, we want to do the WPS thing uh, again. I'll put a link in the description on how to do that, because I already made a video on that, so I'm not going to repeat myself. I don't even want to repeat myself. <laughs> And then you should be good to go. And your uh, Wi Fi stuff will show up on the mini box. You can grab the remote. Uh, I can't find my remote. Anyway, if you're looking at that same setup, you can make sure that it's showing up on the mini box. 
as well. So pretty much that is about it. Uh, if you like, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with your friends if you want to know more how to fix our cheap one. Ah, that was pretty terrible. <laughs> you can tell how much dust I got here. I don't know if you guys can see it. fix it. Um, yeah, so that, there you go. That's pretty much how you do it. Had a lot of questions from people asking me how it, it will work. So, yeah, there you go. And like I said, like, comment, subscribe, share the video with your friend. If you want to know more? Now, hit you guys on the next video. Hopefully, hopefully, something good. All right, you guys later. Peace.